Good day, time, my fuzzyites, and welcome to Just Pitching, the show where I put forth questions and answer them about where a franchise is going, like this one, where the Evil Dead franchise should go, or what a franchise should do with a certain thing, like my last episode, uh, if uh, Disney made a fighting game. All in all, it's just a fun thought experience for me. Sometimes I have friends, sometimes I don't. This time I am completely solo, and there are three different timelines that I wish to talk about for the series to go. Uh, so just to put this out there, if you haven't watched my uh, Evil Dead Month stuff, or even my quick review of Evil Dead stuff, I have basically watched all the movies and TV shows from Ash vs. Evil Dead. Hey, some of these are... From Ash vs. Evil Dead. The remake of Evil Dead. And then the newest movie in the Evil Dead franchise. So basically we have the Ash Williams era. The Maya Allens era. And then the Beth someone era. Let me just double check her name. Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, you're going to say it's about sisters, but you're not going to tell me who it is. We have the Ash Williams era where it should go in some movies and games and whatnot. The Maya Allen era where it should go with movies, games, and whatnot. Maybe games. And the Evil Dead era with Beth and uh, Cassie. Uh, if you have not watched the movies, I recommend it. It'll give you a lot more indication of where we're going. Uh, as well as we already have some games. Like... Hail to the King, uh, Fistful of Boomstick, Regeneration, and Evil Dead the Video Game. While I'm not going into the games for continuing the legacy themselves, I may bring them up as a point of reference. So please, if you haven't watched, watch my quick review of them, or watch my playthroughs of them. By the time this is out on YouTube, uh, it'll be out there. But anyways, so we are going to start with the Ash vs. Evil Dead franchise. So where Ash vs. the Evil Dead left us last is Ash was sent to the future for an undetermined amount where the world is destroyed. He has his vehicle back, which has been tricked out to be very Mad Max-ish with a lot of weapons and just crap on it. He's with a possibly android lady with super... T Super futuristic technology that's on her body, apparently. As well as he, him getting his own hand. And, yeah, he's alone in this world that has been destroyed by the Deadites that were released to test the Earth in Season 3. So, the first thing I'm going to tackle with the continuation is, of course, the, the show How It Goes Off. I see it either there being a movie one or two movies or a TV show and the final episode of the TV show uh, I have read that Bruce Campbell is unable to play uh, Ash Williams in live action anymore he just doesn't have the capacity to do the slapstick and whatnot which is a shame but so I'm what that means for this is that anything that comes out after this that involves Ash We'll either have it will have to either have him in a role where he doesn't do much being a mentor or you know uh be an animation and considering this is his story it wouldn't make sense for him to get all riled up get all riled up 
get in the car to go and then be like, yeah, no, I'm just going to be a mentor. We're going to jump into the animation. So whether it be two movies or a TV show, I see it going where Ash must go out into the, the Deadite Lands, as I'll call it, in order to find uh, Kelly, Pablo, and Brandy. Um, so for a movie, I think the first, if it's a movie, I think the first one, him going out, where he gets, the movie would be him going out and getting all four of those people, as well as some other randoms to have his back. So by the end of the movie, one, he'll have had Kelly, Pablo, and Brandy. Or maybe at the end, he just meets the final member of the team. So in this universe, I can see Pablo. So we're going to say that after the events of Ash vs. Evil Dead 3, with all three characters, Brandy, Kelly, and Pablo, going into the military base, they all went to the military base, crap was hitting the fan, and they had to make a decision of what to do next. Kelly decided that the best course of action would be to go and get... Go to the Knights of Salem. Another thing I gotta look up. Evil Dead. Knights of Samara. Kelly, having a in touch with Knights of Samara, decides, hey, the best course of our of the best course of action for us to do is go find the Knights of Samara, join them, and fight off this threat, because they'll know what to do. Pablo, seeing the people around him and knowing he has the power, decides that he his best choice of action will be to stay with the military base and create a field around them in order to uh, make them protected. And Brandy will want to go to her father and try and help him out in whichever way she can. Uh, this will all be told probably through a flashback where you meet the person, there's a flashback in a show, in the show, or if it is the movie, then having a prequel movie to show what happened to them. So, for this, Kelly went, she finds the Knights of Samaria, she is able to talk to them, and slowly become the leader of the Knights of Samaria, who are making plans, taking, saving people, making places safe and whatnot in the wasteland as it goes. So that's going to be her arc of as being the leader of all of the Knights of Samaria, making people safe zones, binding and executing heavy deadite population, keeping portals closed, stuff like that. Actually, it should probably be Pablo. Pablo has the power to do so. Uh, Pablo. No, because I want them. They see they could be together, but I think it's more interesting for story-wise if they are separate, doing their own things. Because another way they could do it is Pablo, Kelly, and Brandy just go around making safe zones, shutting down portals and whatnot. So I guess two movies idea. Either they're all separate. Brandy works with uh, people. They make some of the Knights of Samaria, they make the area for her dad, get him safe, get him going, and she has been working towards getting him better, getting him well suited, which is why you have the vehicle at the end, it's because she built it, and before he woke up, she went out to an area to get more stuff for him, and was never seen again. Pablo has been busy making a giant city for everyone. So you have a huge area where it's basically a paradise protected by Pablo. Where he's in a trance, putting out the force field, and he cannot leave or else it'll be uh, bad for everyone. Kelly going out to pl from place to place to defeat deadites, keep them down, and make sure nothing gets too much or overwhelms the towns and whatnot. So for the movie, first movie slash part first part of the TV show, animated TV show, you would have Brandy helping her dad, getting him everything he would need, keeping him alive. 
Uh, you have Pablo being in a trance, keeping the whole city alive. And then you have Kelly, who is going out with the Knights of Samaria and keeping the Deadites down. And that would be the past, going to the future. Again, either it would be shown through flashbacks or maybe a prequel movie slash show. Uh, where you don't, if it was like this. Um, the other way, like I said, you could do this is after the events of three, all three of them stuck together and they met the Knights of Samaria uh, over the course of the TV show. Kelly still becomes the leader of the Samaria. Brandy is there giving advice and helping out making stuff and whatnot. Pablo is using his special powers to help them and they're going around and sealing off portals. And at the moment of the movie, they are doing a really big they're sailing basically a really big portal. So if it was one movie about a good way through, they would all meet up. If it's the second option, if it's timeline, if it's the split timeline, then the movie would focus on him going through. He would probably meet Brandy first as a, as the android with him would say, "Oh yeah, Brandy, your daughter is she's just over there getting you stuff and working on certain things." They go there, they meet up. She's like, "Yeah, I need She's being attacked by Deadites, of course. Ash helps, defeats all the Deadites, says, okay, let's go. And she goes, no, I'm working on something. I can't leave. And so Ash, after a talk, and her saying, yeah, uh, Kelly is part of the Knights of Samaria. She became their leader. I hear they're out in this area. You should go and help her and bring her back. By the time you get her and Pablo, I should be done with what's going on here. Keeping it big -ish for the audience. So then Ash goes out, meets Kelly, they fight a big horde of it, beat it. Kelly and the, some of the knights join him as he is the savior of the world. He is the one that will stop it all. And then other knights continue their mission going out and onward. From there, they go into the city with Pablo, trying to find him. And after a long while of searching, they do. And then a conflict erupts, either being A, he is being there, into, put into wires and whatnot, so while he's doing a good thing, it is not exactly, it is against his will. So it adds a, could add a layer of, oh, if we take him out, the city could, will be, won't be protected. But if we leave him, this isn't good for us because it's how you, uh, but if we take him, leave him, then it's not really how it needs and we need him for the end. Giving a little bit of controversy to what they can do and trying to figure that out. Um, or else Pablo isn't there against his will, he's just in a meditative state. They wake him up and he has to make the decision to keep going or not, in which he's like, okay, don't worry, we have plans for this, we'll just be quick, we, but we need to move fast, I can only sustain this power for a few more weeks when I'm gone. And they all go. Uh, on the Together timeline, what would probably happen is Ash meets up with them rather quickly and they go through different areas beating deadites, sealing portals and whatnot, celebrating as they make their way to the bigger bad of the whole series <laughs> the dark ones um yeah so that'd be movie one after getting Pablo in which Brandy's like don't you worry let's go see the thing as they go see the thing, they open it, and it's a giant machine. Maybe it's a mech droid. Maybe it's something like that. Something over the top. That looks awesome. Maybe it's a huge robot with its own chainsaw hand that Ash can pilot. And the other two, other three, have their own smaller or other mech droids. Or robots or whatever it is. Oh. And that would lead into the second half of this TV show, or the second movie where they learn uh, in an end credit scene of the movie they would see uh, whoever the big bad is there or maybe it's just an accumulation of different people from their past so you have Ball there, you have Ruby uh, you have uh, Necronomicon Ash from Army of Darkness, Henrietta some new faces and so season two becomes them going out to respective places 
and destroying the Deadite leaders that reside there, whether it be Necronomicon Ash in an old remade castle thing for him, Henrietta in a cabin thing, or just different buildings and whatnot. And so the second movie slash second part of the TV series is them going through every episode, fighting unique bosses, killing them to get to the Dark Ones at the end. Otherwise, it can just be random demons, but I like... I'm a sucker for callbacks, and I like the idea of it being demons from the past, as they have tried to stop Ash before. So the dead ones are like, yeah, let's, re let's get them back under our control, and they will stop Ash. They, of course, don't. Um, ending with them finally being the Deadites. The Deadites are dead. The Medal of Man has been seen. And either you can have two endings at this point. One being that the world is still the way it is, but the Deadites are gone. So now humanity is able to take up the wreckage and grow bigger, grow back to how they were. Plants start thriving again in this world and try and rebuild and recreate. Alternatively, you can have the happier ending where he's, the guy is like, you have done well, the Medal of Man has been seen, we retreat and give you back the world you once knew. So it can go back to Evil Dead Season 4 with Ruby gone, the Dark Ones about to summon the things, they don't, they give Ash the book saying good game and leave. Um, I like the... You have to suffer with the consequences that have befallen you and working towards making a better future with a world that's destroyed personally. <clears throat> I think <clears throat> I think to make a good movie, there can't be just take backs of what goes on. If people die, they unfortunately stay dead. Within reason. If people have something go on and something happens with them, they must overcome that and become better with it. Which I think the Ash vs. Evil Dead series heavily leans into the not everything will be alright by the end. People who have died are still dead, except for Pablo, but they made a deal, which may or may not have turned out worse, and whatnot. So that's it for the series and movie, I think. Uh, basically just a recap, two scenarios for it. Pablo, Pablo working in a city, keeping a major area safe for everyone. Kelly with the lead, being the leader of the Knights of Samara and Brandy working to make Ash everything he needs to be better, be good, and fight the future. Um, anything else? Yeah. So yeah, that's it. And after everyone's together, they go and fight baddies from the past, remade by the Deadites, in order to beat the Dark Ones, win against the Dark Ones, and then they work together to make the future better with the Necronomicon sealed far, far away or buried underneath the cabin. I think that would be a better ending. They go back to the ca where the cabin was and they bury it under it once and for all, defeating the Necronomicon for good. Until the next time. And that would be the end of season four or movie, the movie of Ash vs. Evil Dead, one and two movies and whatnot. Moving on to a game, if they so chose to go that way. I would like to see a game where it's... Uh, we'll do the Mad Max setting again. It's a four-player game, or either one-player or four-player. So with one player, obviously it's Ash, following what happens in the movie, where he just goes through areas, killing deadites, solving puzzles. Because in the... I like... I do like in, like... Hail to the King, and Fistful of Dynamite. There were a lot of fun puzzles to solve and whatnot that weren't too tough. All the time. And so him having to solve puzzles to get further, to get his friends, uh, and whatnot. And after getting, every, getting someone, they join his team, and then they give him a special power. So like Brandy would give him, for a short period of time, a mech suit or something like that. Or he, she would or give him weapons that he could use for a short time and whatnot. Something to give him himself better stuff. Uh, Kelly on the team would add firepower backup. Where a bunch of knights and Sumerian will come in. And they will help fight off the hordes for you. Killing them with weapons or swords or everything like that. 
for a short period of time before they have to retreat and regain their numbers. Um, and Pablo would give a shield around you and protect you from the Deadites. The game would probably be more situated where you'd go to get something for the end game. Maybe it's the book that the dead the <clears throat> the dark ones left behind, or it's the uh, the the you have to get the Canarian dagger, which does a lot more damage, uh, or stuff like that. So overall, I see it being just a go through the levels where you use find items in the levels to get further. You get a friend at the end of a level, or you get something good at the end of the level. Uh, like a new weapon and whatnot as you go. Stuff like that. And that's how I see the game going. Every so often there's a big boss. Take Harking back to the movie idea, you could have, like, the first boss being Henrietta. And then you go on, and the second boss is the Necromancer. The third boss being Ruby, 80s Ruby. The fourth boss, be boss being Ball. And stuff like that. And the last boss being the, um, the Dark Ones. I think that would be a fun idea, giving a puzzle element like they did in it, with more of a free range run around. Or they could just do a uh, open world, <clears throat> where as you go through, you see places from your past that you see from the past games and movies and whatnot. As you do stuff in there, sometimes you get weapons. <clears throat> Mm, that ain't good. But, <clears throat> being an open world where you just go out, you find areas that are safe havens, you save people, you kill deadites, all that good stuff. <clears throat> Another way they could do it is if there's four players, we're right away from the get-go of the game. You have Brandy, Pablo, Kelly on your side, with... Ash being more of a brute forcer, where he'll go through and he does more damage. He's better... Yeah, he does more damage with the chainsaw. He can do more things with that and whatnot. Uh, he's more, he can break down walls, he can hold things open, stuff like that. Uh, Pablo being more of the magical person who uses spells and whatnot to do attacks, slash protect people, slash do magical puzzles and whatnot. <clears throat> Kelly, being more of a leader, has a chance. Oh, Jamie. She has more of an eye for what needs to happen. She can see things the others can't, or notice things the others can't, and can uh, get through, see where they need to go and whatnot, and lead them that way. Brandy, being more of a mecha <clears throat> mechanic in this game, building stuff, upgrading weapons, making new weapons with stuff she finds, and just... <clears throat> being more of the specialist who makes stuff. I think that would be fun for her character, giving her a new depth and reason to be there. And she is a fun character to be. But that is it for the continuation of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Um, whether the, if they made a movie, show, or a, uh, a game. Let me know how you like those ideas as we go on to the Evil Dead <clears throat> Evil Dead 2013 with Maya Allen. So the movie takes place after the events of Evil Dead, of or Evil Dead 2013, of course. Um, <clears throat> where she is sent to a hospital. They clean her wound the best they can. They get her help. And she is still struggling to stay off any sort of drug at this moment. And as she's doing so, she hears whispers of other forces being out in the world. <clears throat> I apologize, I don't know. I don't use the talks as much, so it must not be good for my throat. <clears throat> so she... So her next movie would be... As she struggles to get over addiction, she then is going out to try and stop the other forces that came through the Necronomicon. Because while the All Demon, or whatever she fought at the end of her movie, um, uh, 
Uh, while she did beat that specific deadite, there are still more out there, and so she, and so she is then going out and stopping the other deadites for taking the world. And this can be either a TV, sh a multi, multi-season TV show where she and some people she meets or whatnot, who are also struggling with their own stuff, go forth and try and conquer their own addictions, as well as save the world from further harm. Uh, I don't know much, but I can see it being like the Evil Dead 4 thing, where they go to different areas, they try and figure out what is there, someone has, a ne is, has an Necronomicon and is reading what it could be, they find it, they solve it, they put it to rest, and they move on. With all the classic Deadites hijinks and whatnot. And either they can go to more... Uh, Maya is loopy now, or insane, because of everything that went on to, with her. So she go, it is transitioning more into a uh, humorous thing, where she makes crude jokes, dark jokes and whatnot. Or they just keep it as is, with being very dark, or a bit more dark and gruesome without much comedy to it. So the choice is there. Uh, yeah. But all in all, for an Evil Dead 2013, either a movie or TV show following Maya's story, would simply just be her trying to overcome addiction, the Dead Ace taunting her with that, as she goes through and tries to stop the other Dead Ace that had been released all over the world, and it can be a fun world adventure where they go in, they meet new deadites and whatnot, <clears throat> and have to try and overcome them and their own specific and weird quirks that they do. I think that would be a fun story for it. Maybe the big boss is someone we know, maybe it's Ball from the After the Evil Dead series, crossing them again, which I'm going to say this is a world without Ash. Or Ash is not involved at all in the story, or maybe he's a legend from years and years ago, and this is the rebirth of, a, of the world. But no. Either way, Ash Williams is not part of this world that we fully know of. And yeah. For a game, I can see it going the same way, where she just has to go through different levels to kill deadites, solve puzzles, get new items and whatnot, as she tries to beat him. Uh, instead of ha her having a chainsaw on her arm, I'm going to say that she has a... I want to say she has, like, a powerful gun on her arm and whatnot, just to keep her different from Ash. If they wanted to do a chainsaw, they could, or maybe give her an arm that can turn into many different things to keep her separate from Ash. But I don't want to give her a chainsaw so that she's not, like, she's not the Ash.0. Or 2.0 or anything like that. No, she's her own character with her own thing. It's just parodying or symmetry with Ash's journey, but with a whole new character. Um, then for the game, yeah, I talked about the game and whatnot. Yeah, I don't have much to go off of Evil Dead 2013. Uh, while it was a fabulous movie and whatnot, there's just, at the end of it, it's just her, so I can't really go in depth with any side characters or whatnot. Uh, but yeah, just a nice story where she's struggling with, nice story, a story where she's struggling, struggle, still struggling with her drug addiction as she tries to beat the Deadites who keep promising her stuff and she has to fight against it. Nice thanks. and I think a movie and TV show like that would be good to continue her story and her uh, tra distance into insanity and whatnot and see where it goes. And then last on the list is Evil Dead Rise. Uh, last we saw was Beth and Cassie. Beth and Cassie, who, have, who had survived, <clears throat> they go out. So they got free, they're out, of, they survived it, and they left. 
So this will take place. How old was Cassie? In Evil Dead Rise. Human. Okay, so she's 13. She was born early. Okay, so this place, this will take, we'll just say she's 13 or whatnot during Evil Dead Rise. We will age her up. Uh, what would it be? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. No. Yeah, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21. We'll age her up. So this takes place eight years after the events of Evil Dead Rise. This will make uh, Beth's child about eight. She gave birth. She's alive. Um, and Cassie has turned 21. Uh, I'm just doing this to give her, so that she's older, she's able to make more comp decisions on her own and whatnot. Um, and so, whatever happened with the Necronomicon... Actually, what happened? Did they take the Necronomicon in Evil Dead Rise? I can't remember. There are three books. One of three volumes of the Necronomicon. Oh, okay. So yeah, there are three books. So I guess, hmm. Okay, that's a weird thing that I'll have to look into later. Whatever. Uh, I can't remember if they took the uh, Necronomicon or not, but either way, I'm going to say that if they took it or didn't, they went back into the apartment after all that, and they ended up putting the book somewhere else. Um, yeah. And so the story is just that someone else unleashes demons. Beth is told about it. She is the now... She or Cass. Cassie are the chosen ones who must go out and stop the Necronomicon once and for all. Um, and whatnot. And so it's just... The movie is just them trying to... Going like, yeah, we screwed up. We tried to hide the Necronomicon. That didn't work. Going forth or back and getting the Necronomicon. Uh, back while fighting deadites and whatnot along the way, and that will be the movie for Evil Dead Rise. Um, with them trying to get the Necronomicon back while the while Beth's child is in danger, possibly named after her sister Jessie, Jessica. Was her name Jessica? 
A lot of stuff I should have researched, but this is what you get when you... Off the top of your head a lot of this. Ellie... I apologize for having to look this up, but... Mm. Plot. Okay, it is Ellie. <laughs> so maybe they name... Uh, Beth named her daughter Ellie, I think, or child Ellie, or Danny, depending on who it was. Maybe you have a combination of all the names for the child she has, and they go out and they have to try and get the book back. Alternatively, it can be a story where they hear that the girl from the beginning of the movie is causing chaos, the deadites are rising around the cabin, and they, knowing that they're a part of it, must go and stop, destroy, kill the one unfortunate girl who was there. Um, as they go through, they, yeah. So it's just a classic get the book back scenario slat or, or else so it's either takes place right after where they have to go and stop the one girl and dead eyes from doing wreaking havoc and whatnot or it takes place years after where they have to get the book back and try and discard it once and for all and that'll be evil dead rise too evil Dead rise further um as for a game pretty much the same basic just in game form Solving puzzles in an open-ish world, trying to stop deadites and whatnot. Not much more to do there. You can extrapolate a lot from Evil Dead 13 into this one, because it kind of falls into the same boat, where there's not many outside characters to pull from. So it's just them going around defeating deadites. Um, so, yeah, so that is our the end of our three timelines, then. The Ash Williams era has them on a world that has been completely destroyed by the Deadites, but left alone now. The Evil Dead 13 edition has Maya going around and stopping other Deadites that were released by the book with friends, one of them who can read the book and whatnot. Maybe in the end, the friend betrays them and it goes into another movie. Who knows? And Evil Dead Rise with Beth and Cassie either in right afterwards after, right after the movie, going after and trying to stop the Deadites. Uh, stop the Deadite girl who was taken at the end slash beginning of Evil Dead Rise. Or, years later, them going through and after they they got the book back, buried it, tried to get rid of it. It came back, more Deadites are out, than them trying to get a hold of the book. Which can go into another movie after that. Where they're trying to destroy the book. And as they get closer and closer to destroying the book. More and more deadites emerge to try and stop them. So that's it for all three series. Games they can do. And whatnot. Again it's a shame. Evil Dead. Ash vs. Evil Dead has a lot more to it. To go off of for a next movie. That's interesting. The other two while would be very interesting. Uh, just don't have as much to go off of. Character wise and whatnot but i think it should still be interesting and then this all accumulates into one giant mishmash of all three characters coming together as into a game being evil dead timelines or whatever you want to call it and evil dead timelines having uh four playable modes that accumulate into one so you have it's a will be a there will be a four player game where you have the Ash timeline, you have a uh, Maya timeline, you have a uh, Beth timeline, and then you have a final timeline of a guy or a girl who also go through stuff. Probably a guy so that you can have two guys, two girls, symmetry, and all that good stuff. Ash's timeline, you would have be able to choose from Ash, Kelly, Pablo, or Brandy. 
uh, them having the same exact skills as I said before. As they go through, with Ash being more of a comp fighting focus instead of gun focus, as they go through uh, the Necronomicon once again being released, they go through the areas, they beat the Necronomicon after a few stages, beat bosses, and when they get a hold of the Necronomicon, a portal is opened and they are rushed through it. Leading us into the Maya, Mia area, where her and her friends, uh, the one who can read the Necro is using the Necronomicon and two others, are going through and they are trying to close up portals and whatnot to stop Dead Ice from coming through because someone opened it up again, or maybe this goes off of the friend now opened the portal. After everything was closed, the one friend betrays them and they, the four of them, must go and stop him once and for all. Or her once and for all. After doing so, getting to the end, again, a portal opens up and she and her she alone is sucked through. In the Ash thing, Ash Williams is the only one sucked through. Maya's timeline, Maya's the only one sucked through. The portal closes with her friends there. And for Ash, Pablo, Brandy, and Kelly are there without him. Uh, in the Evil Dead Rise timeline, it is them trying to recover and seal the book for good. So they get the book, they try and run, get rid of it and whatnot, and have fun doing so. At the end of her, Cass so it's her, Cassie, and then two other people who join them. At the end of that story, of course, the portal opens up. Uh, Beth gets pulled through. Cassie and the other two are left behind, wondering what's going on. Leading into the original and fourth story, where you have another fighter who, once again, is trying to fight them. Uh, hmm. Because Ash would be... So Ash would be the heavy combat guy who goes in, can tank damage, and pull out good damage. You have Maya being more... Maybe a glass cannon, or maybe she can go into the deadite she can become part deadite to see what's going on and whatnot for her power so she can blend in with them get places others can't and whatnot and brand uh, beth beth is a whiz with technology she can put things together she can make things work and whatnot she's the techno whiz of the group with the last guy i don't know either he would be a demon killer, uh, he would be either a stealth guy where he goes silently around getting stuff, killing and whatnot, or some other thing. Either way, at the end of his campaign of the four of them fighting massive demons and whatnot, they're overruling Dead Ice not by force, but with their own smarts. Portal opens up, they go through, and it leads to the final act of the game where you pick from one of the four characters who are all submerged into one timeline. With Ash, Mia, Beth, and the new guy all there. They all have their own powers, like Ash is more of a tank. Mia is more of the gunner, or maybe the... Uh, with her hand, it can turn to different things. So maybe she's the jack of all trades, who is able to find, find uses for things and situations. And then you have uh, Beth, who's a techno whiz, who can make stuff, upgrade, and just go like that. And the new guy being stealth-based, or something else. But together, they bring their four books of the Necronomicon, or whatever. They go through, they use their power to be make all four books go into one. A giant demon comes out, they kill said giant demon, and finally are able to destroy the books sending each one of them home to their own worlds. And the books, Necronomicon, is no more. Uh, yeah. So I think that'd be fun for tying up all the timelines together. They have their own stories with their own purposes and own powers coming together for one and going. You can even have a multiplayer thing where players pick which character, ever characters they want from anywhere in the timeline, franchise and whatnot to be one final big huzzah for the series, or at least for now, where you have all the playable characters from Evil Dead the game, 
plus anyone else who would be playable in one place, each with their own separate powers and whatnot. Going forth, destroying deadites as they go through, beating a boss, and then that's it. Uh, and yeah, I think that is it for the future of the Evil Dead timeline. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a fantastic series that I've gone through. I talk about it a lot more in my quick review of the Evil Dead franchise. It was a lot of fun. And yeah, I can't wait for more. I hope they continue the series. And yeah, let me know what you thought about these ideas. Do you like these ideas? Do you think they were good? Or do you think that you can improve on them? Let me know in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're on Twitch, well, meet me on YouTube when this comes out in a while. But thank you, my buddies, for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care.